with Pat's Two Cents, reading Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. When you talk about his authority, and you talk about the fullness, that's everything above, everything in, everything under, everything on. The earth belongs to God. He created everything that was created. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Now, here's the question it poses. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? The answer is, verse 4, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of, of his salvation. Now that's verse 5. We're stopping there. We're going to go to Psalms 27. That establishes who God is. If you belong to God and God is yours, he's in your heart, You've got a son as your Lord and Savior. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're living according to the word. You're reading it. You're talking to God. You're establishing that relationship. I don't care what comes. I don't care what blows in from the east, what comes down from the north. I don't care what comes up from the gutter. The bottom line, you are blessed. You are blessed, no matter what. If they tell you no more benefits, you are blessed. The Lord shall provide all your needs according to his, not the government's, according to his, not welfare, according to his, not cow fresh food stamps, according to his, not social security, according to his riches in glory. Now, we're going to go on to Psalms 27. And Psalms 27 is very good because it reminds us not to fear no matter what's going down or what's coming down the pipe. <clears throat> Lynette had told me earlier, about an alert that was going out on the cell phones. And when I read the alert, it was exactly like she said it. Everybody is is uh, warned to stay in their homes. We're on high alert because of, you know, the big C word. So I'm going to read Psalms 27 verse 1 on down until the Lord tells me to stop. The Lord is my light and my salvation, not the America, not the government, not Congress, not the president. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, 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 he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Now I'm going to stop right there. Now, <clears throat> listen. 
I don't care what's shaking bacon. I don't care what's smoking. I don't care what's moving, what's slithering, what's creeping and crawling. The thing you have to know is God is the one who's in control. God is the one. You know the thing I noticed? Every born again Christian I know, no matter how strong or how weak their, their war, every born again Christian I know, and their family members, <clears throat> their unsaved family members at that. Everybody I know, and I know a lot of people now, and somebody else may be a different story. I don't know anybody, directly or indirectly, who has died from COVID. Now, they may have friends, but I don't know anybody whose families have died from COVID or gotten sick. <clears throat> now, and, uh, and some of the people I know have serious health issues. Listen, y'all. No matter what they threaten, there may come a day when they tell you, if you don't take the inoculation, the, the vaccine, whatever they want to call it, we call it the mark. If you don't take it, we're going to cut off your Medicare. We're going to cut off your Social Security. We're going to cut out your food stamps. We're going to cut out your welfare. We're going to cut out your unemployment. Whatever it is you're getting, we're going to cut it all out. You cannot receive any benefits until you take that mark. Well, they'll say they'll call it the vaccine or flu shot. And then they'll, they'll want you to prove it. And there'll be a way of proving it, which will be eventually the mark of the beast. Listen, y'all. Do you trust God? Do you really, really trust God? No matter what. Hmm? Are you going to bow in order to have your needs met? Are you going to bow in order to keep everything, all the status quo, at the norm according to your norm? Or are you going to trust God? What are you going to do when they tell you, you don't take it, you're out of here? What are you going to do? You know, at that point, you better be getting real close to God so that God can equip you, prepare you, strengthen you on the inner man, and give you all kind of promises that he will stand by, y'all, that he will take very good care of you. What does God say in scripture? He says, at famine, thou shalt laugh. At calamity, thou shalt laugh. See, no matter what's coming down the pipe, no matter what's going on, every born again Christian, I get on the phone with Nutty Lynette. I get on the phone with Nutty and Andrea. I get on the phone with my twin, uh, uh, Lynn. I get on the phone with my son, Peter, my little brat, and my grasshopper, Rashad. And listen to this, y'all. We ain't crying. When you hear our conversations on the phone, you would think nothing is going wrong out there. Nothing at all. Because our hope is in in Christ, it's not in the U.S. government. Our faith stands. So we're laughing. We're talking. We're hooming and hawing. We're getting sleepy, talking about we got to take a nap. That's Lynn. She's always got to take her nap. We're talking about our little normal, you know, mundane, run-of-the-mill stuff. They tolerate me talking about what project I'm doing in my house next. They tolerate me. I know sometimes that I hear we go with another project. But that's okay. They love me. They can suffer through it for a minute. My point is we're laughing and teasing each other. We're talking. We're encouraging each other. We pray for one another. And nobody is biting their nails down to the, to the, to the, to the nub, worrying about COVID, worrying 
about the vaccine, worrying about anything. My question to you is where, where does your faith lie? Do you know if COVID, if somebody with COVID came, put their hands on you, talked to you, coughed in your face, you're God's child. You know, God can put a shield up and the COVID just dies right there in midair before it ever comes near you. What does Psalms 91 say? There shall no evil befall thee. None of these plagues will come near thy dwelling. So you got to go along with Isaiah chapter 26 that talks about what God warns his people to stay in their chambers. Yeah, this is the time to stay in, y'all. Stay in your chambers until the calamity and the plague is, is passed. You just got to deal with it. Ask God to give you all kind of little witty inventions and things to do in the house so that you're not feeling like you're climbing the walls. God can relax you. You don't have to be restless. You don't have to be nervous. You don't have to have ants in your pants and you need to dance. You don't have to have any of that going on. Why? Because God is your sustenance. God is your friend. He's your very present help in trouble. Hmm? He's your companion. He's your keeper. He's your way maker. God, listen. A lot of you think that it's all about going to church and, and Bible thumping and telling everybody else how to live their life, how to get it together. Y'all missing the big picture. There is so much in knowing God. We've just touched the tip of the iceberg, those of us who have had experiences. There's so much more to knowing God than watching what you're doing wrong. God is not a can of raid waiting for your first oops pss, so he can spray you out of existence or stomp you under his foot. There's so much to God that most people have not even tapped into. Because you can't approach God through religion. You can't approach God through do's and don'ts. Mm -mm. Get to know him. Strive to enter in to that deep area in his bosom where you actually sense his presence, where you actually feel his smile, where you can even feel his anger when he's not happy. That's relationship. You know how you were when you were a little kid? You doing something you know you have no business doing. You know you were told very clearly there's a consequence if you do that again. Here you go, doing it again. And what do you get? That look. I told you. That's the last time I'm going to tell you. You're going to feel it next time. You may not know what I mean when I say it, but when I get through, you're going to feel what I mean. Now you try it one more time. Now, that look comes from your parent. You know they're not playing. All of a sudden, the fear of God is in you. Oh, mercy. Well, see, the problem with this world is most people don't have a fear of God. They feel like they can talk to him any old way, talk about him any old way, treat him any old way, snap their finger, he doesn't hop, well, then screw you. I mean, people have no reverence, they have no fear of God, and ergo, their life is just as shabby as the lack of fear they have for him. Now, when you are in relationship, you know when someone's in a good mood and a bad mood. You know when someone's feeling good about what you're doing, when they don't approve. You know it. There's a check in your spirit. Well, baby, let me tell you, there's going to be a whole lot of things coming down the pipe uh, uh, soon. One of those things, I'm going to warn you right now, and that's why you got to stay close up with God. 
so you can feel reassured and safe because you are safe in his hands. Demons are going to start manifesting themselves in physical form. Now, they may still be invisible, but more people are going to see demons than ever before. I mean, you'll see demons that look like birds. You'll see demons that look like half man, half rooster. You'll see demons that look like uh, something from out of a Hall Halloween magazine. You'll see demons that look like dogs, that look like giant roaches. You'll see all kind of weird manifestations of demons. You'll get ready to go to sleep and you'll see a person's face and their face begins to contort and their facial expression gets evil. You know, okay, I know what's coming. You rebuke all evil in the name of Jesus, commanded to stay as far away from you as the east is from the west. In the name of Jesus. You don't lay there and just take it like a lot of women do when they're being raped. Sometimes that's the safest thing to do is just lay there and not fight. But you don't lay there for no demon. No. No, you always can outstrength a demon in the power of the Holy Ghost, in the power of God's might. So whether it's COVID, whether it's a demon, whether it's a threat of war, whether it's a threat of having all of your benefits taken, you better know that you know that you know you trust in God, baby. Or you will be the first one in line. To my, I take it for fear of what would become of you if you didn't have all your safety nets. The only safety net you need is God. You have no idea what miracles he can do in your life. Somebody could come, they could tell me, okay, uh, you know, we're going to have to put back all your benefits. And there I have no income. Somebody could, could, could get online and say, you know what? The Lord told me to pay your house off. You know what? The Lord told me to send you a certain amount every month. And before you know it, you get four or five people and you got more than what the government was doing. I'm telling you, you do not have to worry about what the government will or will not do. You have no need for fear. What can man do to me? Nothing that God can't counter. counter I mean, he, he'll turn the whole thing and turn it out for your good. You'll be better off in God's hands than you are in the government's hands. So even if you are depending on the government to an extent, always know that your real supply is God. Always know your real protection is God. Always know your real immunity is God. Always know that your best traffic cop that can tell you go here, go there, do this, do that, is God. He can tell you explicitly what to do in dreams. And when you wake up, you will not forget the dream. I remember one time when I was just to share the practical stuff I'm talking about. I'm not just talking pipe dreams here. Listen, years ago when I had had a dream that God was going to bless me with a brand new car. I had never had a brand new car. My whole life was a, a, a litany and a, a list of, uh, of, of hoopties. So here I am in my 40s. I ain't had a brand new car yet. Never bought a car from a dealership. The Lord gave me a dream. I'm explaining now. This is not talking about me. I'm talking about the Lord. And in the dream, I'm walking around this car at a dealership. And it's beautiful. And it's a tall man. He's six foot three. Old man. And he had about my age. And he hands me the keys. And he says, here are the keys to your new car. And I sat in the driver's seat and cried my eyes out, thanking God for such a blessing. Now, check it out, y'all. 
I said all that to say that when God is ready to provide, he will give you explicit directions. Three years later, I ain't got a car yet. Three years later, I get a dream. I'm sitting on a bus. There's a man behind me. I'll never forget this dream. The voice says, look out the window. I look out the window and it's a, a gigantic parking lot loaded with cars. He said, God is going to give you that new car. But first, he wants you to buy a used car. Now, here's the trip. The new car that was in my dream had not been made yet. I don't even know, I didn't even know what kind it was, but there was nothing on the road that looked like that car in my dream. Everything back then looked like a, a box, a rectangular box, a square box, but everything was boxy. And this car had curves, baby. It was gorgeous. Now, I go, I ask the Lord when and where. He tells me where and when and tells me who to ask for. And when I go in and ask for a lead, they say, yeah, Lee, you got a customer. I'm like, okay, Lord, this is the place. And I, I bought my Buick Roadmaster, three years old. That was the newest car for me. Now check it out. I'm trying to show you how explicit God is. Eight years later. Now I done had that dream about, let me see, eight and three, 11 years. 11 years passed, you know, since I had that new car dream. And here I am, 11 years down the road. My my Buick now is, is uh, it's, it, I think it's a little more because my Buick was 10 years. Yeah, it was, yeah. Anyway, the bottom line is, the Lord let me know what year to, to, to start shopping for the car. 2003. So my husband and I, we get in and out of all these cars. They have to be wide for my bottom and long for his legs. And that's all I told anybody. I didn't tell him anything else other than V8. That's all I said. I gave the Lord my specs. I gave him my specs on the used car. And when he told me to go to Buick, and I went in there, the car that I specified to the Lord was sitting right there. It was the only car that man walked me over to. Mm -hmm. Now, I want a burgundy on the outside, tan on the inside. I'm saying the specifics for a reason. I said, Lord, when I get a new car, I want that new pearl look they got. They got these pearl colored cars with ivory leather on the inside. And I want this, 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 this. I went down the list. Yeah, new car. I figured I could be more fussy with a new car. We went all over the place shopping. Every time we were done. And every time I walked up to my Buick Roadmaster, I saw the Pearl car we had test driven. I kept seeing it. It wouldn't leave me alone. I closed my eyes to go to bed and Pearl car just flashing like a, like a flashback, steadily flashing in my eyes. I said, Lord, looks like he's telling you, like, this thing is following me everywhere I go. So anyway, we got the car. Now, my point in telling you that, God knows how to get you to your blessing and how to get your blessing to you. You hear what I'm saying? When God gives you explicit direction, I remember when I broke up with Milton and you know, we were messing up, and I didn't want to lose out on God for no man. I don't care how much I loved him. Nobody was worth that. Relationship. Now, check it out. Milton called one day, and I'm like, oh, what are you calling for? We're not supposed to talk to each other. I know, I know. I just, I was just thinking about this, and I got to get off the phone. I'm sorry. Click. Now. And what I heard in my ear was, get off the phone. Get off the phone. I was like, wow. So I got off the phone. Now, that was God setting the stage 
for Milton to ask me to marry him. So I had to go along with every move. I had to stay away. I had to do whatever God said do and be obedient in order for him to come through on his end. Now, we're going through all of this, all this devastation now. People are dropping like flies according to the news. Okay. But the bottom line is, we're getting all kind of warnings. We're getting all kind of alerts. What if God has been warning you and you haven't been paying it any attention because you just saw it as a nightmare? Think about that. All these things that are going on right now, every time I went to the Lord and asked him, it was as if the Lord was saying, chill, baby, I got you. You're good. And that's all I would get. I wouldn't get a whole bunch of nightmares about what was coming down the pike or, you know, losing this or losing that. Nope, the Lord would always give me reassurance in Scripture. So what I'm trying to tell you is, if you're in the secret place of the Most High, under His covering, depending on Him for everything, for your total sustenance, God will take good care of you. You won't feel the sting of the times that we're in. You won't feel the burn uh, of the friction that's going on around society right now. You won't feel the pain of loneliness and restlessness. You won't feel any of that because God's got you. You're good. God's sustaining you. Yeah, it is well with you. It is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way and sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When God said it's well with you, baby, you can take it to the bank. I don't care how empty your bank account is. Take his word to the bank. You have nothing to worry about. Years ago, when the Lord let me know he wanted me to go into cosmetology. Now, these have nothing to do with tragedies. The point is, God knows how to direct his children. And it was on my mind this afternoon. The whole thing was replaying. And this woman was the supervisor of the whole department of special ed. And her best friend was the teacher I was the assistant to. And I had knocked my days down to three days a week because I was bootlegging at home doing hair. And I was making more money doing hair than I was doing, you know, working. So, you know, <laughs> do the math. And I prayed and I said, Lord, could I be self-employed? Is it possible? What would you tell me to take at school? And I saw a vision of a sign, an arched sign that said COST and with cosmetology. It, it, yeah, I, I looked and said cosmetology. I wasn't happy. I wanted God to tell me I was going to be this fantastic psychiatrist, speech therapist. I was going to be a graphic artist. I was going to be an illustrator. I was looking for all the big stuff. God told me cosmetology. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't fathom standing on my feet doing hair all day, putting up with silly women. So it wasn't exciting. But I didn't ignore it. I explored it. I took a temporary leave of absence for two months. And then when I knew I heard from God, I went back to work and I gave them notice. And when I gave them notice, because I was going to start eight hours a day, 40, uh, five days a week, a 40 hour week class. The supervisor looked at me and said, you really need this job now. This is your source. And I said, no. I said, the Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. He wants me to go to cosmetology. Four days in, I was in love with that class and I've never had to work a job since. Now, 
when God directs you, I don't care if the town next to you is covered and inundated and, and, and just overwhelmed by flooding, devastation, your street's going to be good. I don't care if there were earthquakes all in, in, in whatever city. I don't even, even want to put that out there, but earthquakes. If, if there was a gas leak somewhere, if there was a, a problem over here, a problem over there, uh, landslides, whatever. Where you live, you'd be like, if you don't look at the news, you don't know anything's wrong. Because everything's copacetic in the Lord's hands. See, you have no need to fear what man will do to you. You have no need to fear what weather will do to you. You can see a tornado coming, and you and your friends can rebuke that tornado and watch it going. It'll never come near you because you took authority. There's so much more to walking with God than the do's and don'ts and not going to hell. So much more. But you got to really pursue him. He's not a cheap date. And that's what most of you want is a cheap date. Bam, bam, thank you, man. I got what I need. Now you going down the road now. I'm done with you for now. I call you when I need you again. See, that's not the way God operates. But that's the way many of us do. And many of us treat him that way. Then when, when hell starts to hit the fan, we're like, Lord, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And I know sometimes, Lord, oh, don't you remember that conversation you had last week? Yeah, about how rotten I was. Uh huh. But now you need me. Uh huh. Yeah. Now you want me to jump to your tomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, relationship with God has to include respect, reverence, and fear. And I'm not talking about the kind of terror that makes you want to shrink down and die because you're afraid that the, that the murderer is going to come and cut you up in 10 million pieces. That's not the kind of God you serve. God is love. And until you get that love, until you understand that love, you'll always treat him like a bellhop. Half the time, the other half the time, you'll try. I'm telling you, you have got to pursue God. These times are getting darker and darker. We're not only going to have demons showing up, you're going to have people flipping out. They'll be at the grocery stores, at the banks, and all of a sudden, they will, a switch will go off in their head, and you think you got a crazy woman by the tail, a crazy man by the tail, and they are going off. They're ready to, to, to bludgeon anybody in their pathway. I'm telling you, this stuff is getting ready to get weird because the demons are cutting loose now. You may not want to believe in demons, but baby, they're real. Just because you don't believe it don't mean they're not real. You don't see oxygen. A lot of people say, oh, I never saw it, and I, I, I got to see it. You don't see oxygen, but you are so convinced that that's what you're breathing. You're breathing something. Something's keeping you alive. Just because you don't see it don't mean it ain't being. All right. So you need to seek God in this time. Constantly ask him, Lord, is there anything I need to do? <clears throat> is there anything I need to store up on? Or am I okay in this area? Is there anything I need to, to prepare myself for? Can you give me scripture to keep me from getting nervous when the news is steadily at my ear trying to get me all worked up over their little secret agendas? Lord, tell me what I need to do. Tell me what I don't need to do. You have somebody coming over your house Here's a perfect way to protect yourself. Lord, if they got it, if they're carrying it, or if I got it, either way, don't let them get here. Cancel their trip. Cancel the visit in Jesus' name. Somebody coming to fix your toilet? 
Lord, if they got it, don't let them come. Make their truck break down and send somebody who doesn't have it. Send somebody who's highly skilled and highly uh, um, conscientious about their job, but not at all infected. See, you got to go to God for every little detail. Listen to this, y'all. The more specific your prayers, the more specific will be his answers. You come at him with vague, he'll come at you with a shrugged shoulder. He knows what you mean, but there are times he requires us to spit it out and spell it out. There's a certain amount of humbling that comes with that, you know. I need thee every hour. Sometimes we don't want to admit how badly we need God because we feel like, Put myself up by my own bootstraps. I'm good. No, baby. You can't wipe your behind without God. All right. Anyway, I'm done. And I hope that that encourages you to seek his face. Seek his face. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my Faith, listen, if you don't have, this is, this is Pat's two cents on this one here. If you don't have a prayer request, if you don't have a crisis for him to come and answer, if you don't have a need for him to fill, why not sit there and just talk to him? Just talk to him. Fellowship with him as if he's sitting in your room with you. Lord, you see that sorry acting. Oh, my goodness, Lord. Or you do something silly. You got to laugh at yourself. Okay, Lord, I know, I know. But you got to remember, you made me, so I'm blaming you. You know, clown with him, joke with him, be his friend. You're not being disrespectful. He created humor. Who, Lord, I sure hope you help me know what I'm supposed to do before anything goes down. It's really good right now, and I really, really thank you. Sometimes all you have is gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But you're still keeping your communication open with him. Every relationship is not about what you can do for me. <clears throat> uh, Peter and I went out and shot pool. It wasn't about what can you do for me. He wasn't there for what I could do for him. We were there to just fellowship. Lynn came up here one day. We had lunch. And we laughed and joked and had a good time. It wasn't about what she could do for me or what I could do for her. We were there to enjoy each other. Why can't you do that with God? And I'm leaving you with that one. Amen? Amen. Your companionship Amen. with the Lord will get you through these dark days. He's the one, according to the word, that will light your candle. He Amen. will light your darkness. God bless Amen. you.